Hello guys and welcome back to Jaegerists. In today's video, we will be going through the story of Berthold Hoover. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this. Berthold was an Eldian born in the continent of Marley. At some point in his childhood, he joined the Marlian military as a warrior candidate. He was praised for his shooting abilities and was selected along with Annie Leonhardt and Marcel Galliard to become warriors and candidates to inherit the power of the Titans. Berthold one day noticed a fellow candidate named Porco Galliard bullying Reinar Braun, a smaller candidate. After Porco left, Berthold helped Reinar to his feet and formed a lifelong friendship with him. Upon acquiring the power of the Colossus Titan, he learned to use its power almost immediately. He, along with Reiner, Annie, and Marcel, began a mission to attack the Walled Eldians in the year 845. The main objective of the mission was to steal the power of the Founding Titan and bring it to the Marley government. The day they were about to breach Wall Maria, the warriors encountered Ymir's Titan while traveling. Still in a mindless state, she attacked the three boys and nearly killed Reiner. Marcel ended up sacrificing his life to protect his friends. They later regrouped and were about to abandon the mission, but Reiner stopped them, reminding them of the consequence. Annie, enraged and terrified, attacked Reiner whilst Berthold could only watch the scuffle. After Reiner took the lead and decided that they would continue the mission, the remaining warriors headed to the wall and began their operation. Berthold transforms into his Colossus Titan form at Shiganshanon District, terrorizing its population and kicking a hole in the district's gate. The attack leads to falling debris scattering across the town, crushing houses in the process. Immediately after his attack, Berthold reverts to his human self, while Titans enter the city from outside the walls, resulting in the population being set on by them. After exiting his Titan, Berthold comes in close proximity with a pure Titan, but is ignored as it instead entered Shiganshanon District. After the armored Titan breaches Wall Maria, Berthold manages to enter along with Reiner Braun and Annie Leonhardt. During the abandonment of the wall, Berthold and the other two forge their family records. Berthold and Reiner find work as lumberjacks for two years, whilst Annie gathers information inside Wall Sheena. Together, they masquerade as refugees from deep in the mountains south of Wall Maria, who learned of the attack at dawn as their village was under assault by Titans, a tale stolen from a deceased colleague. The trio later discuss their discovery that King Fritz and the nobles are puppet rulers and not actual subjects of Ymir. They then decide to enlist as soldiers so that they can join the military police and get close to the interior. Eventually, Berthold enlists in the military academy as part of the 104th Training Corps, with aspirations of joining the military police brigade and living in the safety of the inner wall. He was considered to be one of the best in regards to vertical maneuvering equipment, enough so that Aaron Jaeger came to him for advice when he was dealing with faulty equipment. After seeing Aaron's determination and desire to join the Survey Corps, he considered himself a coward for wanting to get far away from them. However, Aaron encouraged him, saying that after witnessing the attack on his village, no one would blame him for his decision. Eventually, he graduated in the top 10 of his class, coming in at third place, just under his friend Reiner Braun. Five years after his attack on Shiganshanon District, Berthold transforms into the Colossus Titan at the entrance of the Tross District. He immediately repels the military trainees on top of Wall Rose with vapor from his high temperature body, and then breaches the gate into the city. He takes note of Aaron Jaeger preparing to attack, but disregards him for the time being. As he sets his eyes on the wall's fixed artillery, the Colossus Titan swings his arm and destroys the wall's defenses. Surviving the assault, Aaron launches himself at the Colossus Titan's neck and attempts to attack his nape, leading to Berthold dissolving his Titan's body and Aaron missing his target. His attack prompts the garrison to begin the Colossus Titan contingency plan for Trost District and results in Titans entering the city. Upon re-entering Trost, Berthold takes part in the attack against the Titans. However, with a supply team stuck in Trost's military headquarters, he is essentially immobilized with many of his teammates on a rooftop. He, Reiner Braun, and Annie Leonhardt discuss what to do next, with Reiner suggesting that they wait for the Titans to gather to them before they make a move. Mikasa Ackerman asks them if they have seen Aaron, and Reiner points out Armin Arlert, telling her he was in Aaron's squad. Mikasa takes charge, leading an attempt to get to the military headquarters in Trust, which Berthold takes part in. Connie Springer, Mikasa, and Armin arrive shortly afterward, with an abnormal Titan in tow that promptly begins killing the Titans swarming the outside of the building. Berthold takes part in Armin's plan to clear out the smaller Titans that have infiltrated the headquarters armory. After the Titans are lured together by the cadets and blinded via gunfire, he and six other cadets attack them in an effort to clear out all of the Titans in one move. As the other cadets move out after resupplying, Berthold is among the soldiers that stay behind to observe the abnormal Titan as it is overwhelmed by the mindless Titans. Suspecting that the Titan is intelligent, 
Berthold, Annie, and Reiner argue that they should help it and prevent it from being eaten. They are silenced when the Titan breaks away from the Titans devouring it to kill one final Titan before collapsing. They prepare to leave, but are shocked at the sight of Eren emerging from the Titan's nape. Berthold, Jean Kirsten, Annie, and Reiner are placed on standby with their fellow cadets and are ordered not to tell anyone what they witnessed. After seeing what appears to be Titan vapor from inside the city, he and the soldiers that witness Eren's emergence from the Titan's nape scale the wall to see what is happening. They see Eren protecting Mikasa and Armin from cannon fire, with a shield made from the torso of his Titan form. Soon after, Eren transforms into the attack Titan to seal the breach in Trost, and Berthold discusses the events with Reiner as their plan is foiled. Their conversation is overheard by Marco Bot, leading to Reiner immobilizing him while Annie removes his vertical maneuvering equipment. As the three abandon Marco, Berthold looks on in shock as he is partially eaten by a Titan. After the ordeal, Berthold joins the Survey Corps with Reiner Braun alongside Mikasa Ackerman, Aaron Yeager, Connie Springer, and a few others, instead of following the warrior's original plan to join the military police brigade alongside Annie Leonhardt. Berthold participates in the Survey Corps' 57th expedition outside the walls. The mission is fairly slow-paced for him until he arrives at the Titan Forest with his group and is ordered to be on standby. He waits atop the trees with his comrades so that they may stop any Titan from entering the forest where their superiors are. A loud Titan scream can be heard from within the forest and several Titans begin to charge in. After the Titans are gone beyond the soldier's watch point, Berthold sees the smoke signal indicating the time for retreat. He regroups with his comrades and they head back to the walls. Upon re-entering the gate, the Survey Corps receives comments and criticisms for their loss of life and lack of results. In the aftermath of a failed mission to capture the female Titan, Berthold is among the recruits placed under observation at an old mansion and suspected of being a potential accomplice of Annie Leonhardt. When Titans are discovered within Wall Rose, he is one of the soldiers placed on the squad sent to evacuate villages in the south. That evening, the southern squad meets up with Emir and Krista's squad, and they decide to take refuge for the night in Utgard Castle. At some point during the night, the castle comes under attack by Titans, and the recruits are forced to defend the interior from the smaller Titans that have invaded. After Reiner Braun takes off on his own to investigate, Berthold offers a strange observation of his friend's bad habit of risking himself for others. When a Titan manages to break through a stairwell door, he comes to Reiner's defense with a pitchfork and helps fight it off. The two reaffirm their promise to survive and return to their home together. After a second Titan manages to enter and injure Reiner, he helps Ymir toss it out of a window. He begins to behave in a withdrawn manner, commenting that Reiner has changed and is no longer a warrior. However, he refuses to elaborate further on the subject. Eventually, their superiors are killed by the attacking Titans and the rookies are left defenseless. This drives Ymir to reveal herself to be a Titan, using her powers to protect the others. Berthold, along with Reiner, are shocked to recognize her as the Titan that had killed their friend, Marcel Galliard, several years earlier. The group is eventually rescued by Hange Zoa's squad and evacuate to the wall with the intention of regrouping with their main forces. Injured and distressed over their ordeal, Reiner breaks down under the stress and confesses their identities to Aaron Jaeger, while Berthold watches in growing distress. When Aaron tries to tell Reiner that he is just tired and making things up, Berthold agrees, but Reiner then confirms their identities by tearing off his bandage and showing his injured arm is rapidly healing. Berthold, shocked by his actions, asks if they are really going to reveal themselves now. However, the two of them are viciously attacked by Mikasa Ackerman before they are able to transform. Critically wounded and terrified, Berthold transforms into a partial Titan form and begins to attack the soldiers on the wall while Reiner attempts to kidnap Eren. In the chaos, he manages to capture Amir and a random soldier, swallowing them both whole. Afterward, he counters an attack by Hange's squad through generating intense heat and steam, burning anyone that gets too close. He remains in a skeleton-like state, burning profusely to prevent any attack against him. Directly below, the armored titan is overpowered by Eren's titan and begins roaring. In response, the colossus titan topples from the wall and lands on top of a fighting Eren and Reiner, exploding upon impact. The resulting explosion wounds most of the Survey Corps soldiers and allows Reiner and Berthold to successfully capture Eren and flee the scene. Several hours later, he takes refuge with Reiner and their two captives in the Titan Forest. He is mostly silent during the following arguments and discussions, only speaking up when prompted by Amir or Eren. Berthold is greatly distressed by Reiner's strange behavior and is shown to have known about it long before anyone else. He is able to bring his friend back to reality by reminding him that he is not a soldier but rather that they are both warriors. Eren later confronts him about his role in the death of Carlo Jaeger, demanding to know what he thought when he learned about the suffering he would cause. 
He responds with a vague comment about having felt sorry for him, horrifying Aaron and leading him to scream at them both. Though Amir agrees to work with them when offered, Berthold remains unconvinced and warns Reiner that she cannot be trusted. He brings up the death of their friend, who was devoured by Amir, though Reiner reassures him that she can be trusted since her only consideration is Krista's safety, but is reminded that Krista has value to them since she is a member of the Reese family and may be able to provide them with important clues. Reiner responds by teasing him, demanding that he confess his feelings to Annie once they make it home. Berthold attempts to protest, but Reiner claims his tendency to stare at her gave him away. The pair notice a signal flare, and realize the rescue team has already found them and prepare to flee. While Reiner subdues Aaron, Berthold confronts Ymir over the death of his friend. She states she has no memory of having done it, but apologizes to him and asks if he hates her. He admits that he is not certain, but he cannot hold her responsible since none of them wanted to devour humans. He asks how long she wandered as a pure titan, and implies that he and Reiner may also have spent some time trapped in their titan forms in the past. As the group flees, Ymir notices the signal flares and becomes agitated. She demands that they kidnap Krista, and attacks Berthold when they refuse. They are forced to land in the trees, and she further physically intimidates and threatens Berthold until they relent. Once Ymir returns from kidnapping Krista, he straps an unconscious Aaron to his back, and both cling to the armored titan's back as he runs from the pursuing troops. Realizing how close the troops have already gotten, he shouts at Amir for having delayed them too much. He demands to know what they have been doing all this for, and whether she intends to abandon Krista inside the walls to save herself. A short time later, Mikasa manages to get onto the armored titan's back and attacks Amir before turning on Berthold. To escape, he slips down onto the front of Reiner's neck and shouts for him to protect them. In response, Reiner cuffs his hands around his neck and encloses Berthold and Aaron safely against his neck. Aaron, now awake, begins to struggle and ignores all efforts to calm him down. The other members of the 104th Training Corps climb onto the armored titan's shoulders and begin to shout at Berthold in his hiding place. He initially attempts to ignore them, as Jean Kirsten and Connie Springer alternately attempt to coax him out and confront him over his betrayal. At last, he breaks into tears and yells at them that he never wanted to kill anyone. He confesses to having truly thought of the 104th as his friends, stating that their time together was very enjoyable. Even so, he refuses to surrender and return Aaron, stating that someone has to do it. Before he can elaborate any further, Haynes screams a warning to the group as Irwin Smith leads a horde of titans directly towards them. This forces them to retreat for a time, while Reiner attempts to charge through the oncoming horde in his titan form. It ultimately proves hopeless, and the armored titan is quickly overwhelmed by the large group and forced to begin using his hands to fight. No longer protected by his partner, Berthold is forced to defend himself when the soldiers return in force and attack him. Beginning to panic, he shouts to Reiner that they have to bring Eren back to their home. He narrowly escapes another attack by Mikasa and is confronted by Armin Arlert, who reveals that Annie has been captured. Taunting Berthold, he asks if they intend to abandon their comrade and claims that Annie is currently being tortured by the military for information, with great care being taken to ensure that she does not die. This drives Berthold into a rage and distracts him long enough for a wounded Erwin to launch a surprise attack and free Eren. Berthold can only watch in shock as the soldiers begin their retreat. He remains perched on the armored titan's shoulder as it begins to hurl titans at the fleeing soldiers, slowly healing his injuries. When Eren's power as the coordinate activates, he senses it and reacts with shock. The partners begin to pursue Eren once freed from the titan horde attacking them, but this freedom is short-lived. Taking advantage of his newfound power, Eren screams at them to stay away and threatens to kill them. Both react with shock and horror, sensing Eren's power and realizing that it has directed the horde at them once again. Reiner initially attempts to protect him from attackers, but they are quickly overwhelmed and he is forced to fight on his own. His screams draw Emir's attention, causing her to hesitate in fleeing with the soldiers. Just as a titan is about to kill him, Emir appears and rescues him. The three titans begin to fight together, while the human soldiers retreat back to the walls. The group, exhausted from their two-day ordeal, rests atop Wal Maria while attempting to make sense of things. He questions Emir about her decision to save his life, and is shocked that her actions were motivated by gratitude for having been saved from her eternal nightmare. Knowing that she faces an uncertain future when they return with her to their hometown, Berthold struggles to hold back his tears while thanking her. Around the time the Survey Corps departs for their operation to retake Wal Maria, Berthold and Reiner Braun sit atop the wall amongst a small campsite they made. The two watch the sunset as they await the arrival of their enemy and prepare to begin their own operation. Zeke assures them that Annie Leonhardt is not being tortured. Reiner and Berthold are still doubtful, and regardless, Annie's identity was still revealed. 
Zeke then questions whether the two of them are fully committed, reminding them of the deal they made in the past and questioning if he had gone through all that trouble for nothing. He tells Reiner that they can fight again if he wishes, but if they do and Reiner loses, he will have to give up his armor to another warrior. When Reiner backs down, Zeke tells him to pull himself together so they can focus on their goal of recovering the coordinate and putting an end to this cursed history. Berthold agrees to put thoughts of Annie aside for now, claiming that no one else has to go through hell except for them. Remembering the pain of Annie, Marco Bot, and Reiner, Berthold expresses a desire to end all the fighting. Piek Finger, in her titan form, appears below and alerts them of the Corps' imminent arrival, and the three warriors share a last toast before preparing for battle. As Berthold and Reiner jog along while Maria, Reiner notes that the two of them will be in separate positions, and that Berthold will have to think and act for himself rather than wait for Reiner's signal. Reiner admits that he never thought of Berthold as particularly reliable before, as he tends to leave things to others when it matters in spite of his immense ability, but not anymore. Berthold affirms his desire to end things, the two part ways. When the Survey Corps makes it to the Shiganshanan district, they begin rushing the gate with 100 soldiers to confuse the enemy. As Aaron Yeager flies up above the breach in Wal Maria's southern gate, he prepares to transform. Just as this is happening, he watches from an unknown location, equipped with his vertical maneuvering equipment. As Berthold stands by, he wonders about the outcome of the surprise attack and when Reiner will give out the signal. Soon after, Reiner lets out a roar, signaling Berthold to be thrown in a barrel towards his position by Zeke. Upon hearing the armored titan's roar, the beast titan throws the barrel with Berthold inside towards Reiner's position. Berthold prepares to transform, but upon seeing Reiner's damaged titan form, he abandons the plan and rushes over to check on his friend. He discovers that while Reiner survived the Thunder Spears, he was forced to transfer his consciousness to his titan body. He tells Reiner that he will need to move a little, and if he cannot, then he will have to prepare for the worst. Berthold declares that he is ending this and heads towards the soldiers. As he approaches, Armin Arlert calls out to him and asks to negotiate. Berthold gives him the warrior's conditions, Aaron, and the demise of humanity within the walls. He calls this the harsh truth of reality, and claims it has already been decided. When Armin asks who decided this, Berthold admits that he did. Armin tries to bait him by telling Berthold about Annie's supposed torture again, but Berthold no longer falls for it, and expresses doubt the military police even has her. When Armin tries to leave, Berthold cuts him off, taunting him about wanting to talk. He asks if Armin thought talking about Annie would upset him, because Berthold is supposed to be meek and timid. Berthold knows that Armin's negotiation is actually just buying time for the soldiers to surround him and finish off Reiner. He only agreed to talk to Armin because he wanted to see if he would break down and ask for forgiveness, like the last time he was faced with his former comrades. But he no longer feels conflicted about what he must do, and tells Armin that even though the soldiers are his cherished comrades, he still intends to kill them all. Without warning, Mikasa Ackerman appears behind Berthold and tries to go for the killing blow, but Berthold quickly blocks her blade. Despite losing an ear, Berthold manages to escape using his vertical maneuvering gear. He maneuvers high into the sky, noting that he barely feels any fear, and thinks to himself that no matter how things turn out, he will be able to accept the outcome, as nobody is truly in the wrong. The world is just simply cruel. He transforms, and the resulting blast engulfs all of the nearby soldiers except for Levi's squad and levels the central portion of Shigatshanon. The Colossus Titan then starts to pick up buildings damaged from the blast and throws them all over the district. Many of them have burst into flames due to the heat from his Titan, spreading the fire to the rest of the district. He then heads north towards Commander Irwin Smith's position, but is intercepted by Aaron and the 104th recruits. Aaron charges at Berthold's leg, attempting to stop him in his tracks. With little effort, Berthold lifts the leg with Aaron's Titan dangling from it, before sending Aaron crashing into the top of Wal Maria with a swift kick. The group charge at him to create a diversion for Mikasa to launch the Thunder Spear at his nape. He emits a searing hot gas which forces Mikasa to retreat and injures Connie Springer in the process. After the group has sought temporary safety, he continues to destroy the district. As Reiner recovers and begins to fight the Levi squad, Berthold notes that he was hoping to kill everyone with his transformation, but calmly shrugs it off, saying he is used to such trials. He approaches Aaron and Armin, wondering what Armin will do. Seconds later, Aaron loses his balance and falls to the ground motionless. Berthold, thinking Aaron is already beaten, decides to blow Armin away and unleashes a burst of steam from his body. However, much to his surprise, Armin latches onto his teeth and refuses to let go. He questions what Armin could possibly hope to achieve with Aaron already beaten, but decides to finish him quickly and launches one final burst, charring Armin's skin and burning his hair off, sending him falling lifelessly to the rooftops below. After observing Armin's burnt body, Berthold moves over to Aaron's Titan body, 
only to find it a hardened shell. He then realizes too late that Armin was buying Aaron time to get out of his Titan form and use Berthold's attack as a smokescreen. At that moment, Aaron, in his human form, appears from behind, latching onto the Colossus Titan's nape and slicing it open, severing Berthold's arms and legs before ripping him out and dragging him down to the roof below, where a ravaged yet alive Armin is lying. After being defeated and dragged out of his Colossus Titan, Berthold is approached by Zeke and his Titan mount. Anticipating capture, Aaron begins to slit Berthold's throat, but Zeke tells Berthold that he cannot save him this time. When Levi pursues Zeke, Aaron urges him to give Armin the Titan injection so that Berthold can be fed to Armin to turn him into a Titan and save him from death. However, another soldier arrives with Erwin who is unconscious but also alive. The soldiers debate who should be given the Titan serum between Erwin or Armin, as Berthold lies unconscious and at their mercy. After a fair bit of debating, Levi is left with the decision and finally decides on who to give the serum to. Berthold awakes to find himself at the complete mercy of the Armin's pure Titan. He screams, begging his former allies to save him as they watch, tears in their eyes. Berthold cries out for Annie and Reiner before he is eaten alive by Armin. Armin has a nightmare about Berthold before he wakes up. He dreams that the Colossus Titan is crying. He is told by Aaron that he ate Berthold in order to stay alive, which Armin is mortified to learn. During the fight between the Survey Corps and the Titans of Ymir Fritz, Berthold and a handful of other inheritors are reawakened in the Path world by Zeke. Berthold approaches Armin, who acknowledges that he stole Berthold's life and Titan before asking if Berthold will still lend him his strength. Taking control of his Titan, Berthold immediately begins defending Annie from the hordes of Titans which had been overtaking her. He continues fending off the myriad Titans which are attempting to defend Eren long enough for Eren's nape to be destroyed. He then picks up Armin with some of the other Titans and holds him as he transforms into his Colossus Titan to destroy the rest of Eren's Titan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to us. We will see you guys very soon in one of our next videos.